In this video, we're going to look at replacing an image in a background. And in fact, we're going to do something very creative and create this rather unusual looking image from a number of different images. So let's jump in and see how we do it. I've opened Corel Draw and imported three photos from some old clip art that I had. These are the three images here. I'm going to select the first one and then click Edit Bitmap. Automatically this will open in PhotoPaint as the background image and we've automatically got a link between PhotoPaint and Corel Draw. Now before we go on, I'm going to create a new toolbar. So I'm going to bring out the Pick Tool flyout. I'm also going to bring out the Brush Tools flyout. Now if we pop that just up there like that, we can create a brand new toolbar and pop that one alongside and we'll pop that there. We're going to use the paintbrush and these two tools a reasonable amount throughout. Okay, I'm going to go back now to Corel Draw, select the image in the background, and then copy to the clipboard Control C. Back to Photo Paint, up to Edit, Paste, and Paste as New Object. Or I could have done Control V. Simply click OK, or you could change those parameters if you need to. The first thing I need to do is crop this image. Now by the way you'll notice that bringing in this image has created a second object or if you like a second layer. I'm going to come over to the rectangular mask tool and I'm going to just draw a mask around my image. Now if I want to move this mask I need to select the other pick tool which is called the mask transform tool and that way I can move the mask around on the screen. And I think that's a bit better. Back to my pick tool now, up to Object and Crop to Mask. So I'm cropping my object to the mask. If I use the standard crop tool, it will actually crop the entire image. So let's remove that mask now. And now what we're going to do is cut the hippo's uh, head away from the background. And to do that, up to Image, I'm going to use the Cutout Lab. The Cutout Lab is very easy to use. Just zoom into the area of your subject. And effectively, all you need to do is select the highlighter pen, a nib size, and of course you'll see my nib there, and my nib's quite small. You oftentimes can go with a larger nib. In this case, this is very difficult to cut out because the background is very similar in colour. Anyway, so what we simply do is begin to try and draw half on the hippo and half on the background. Now, I'm going very fast here. In fact, I'm actually using a Wacom pen tablet, a Cintiq, which is a video screen. So I'm actually physically drawing on a video screen, which makes it a lot quicker and easier to work with. Of course, Curl Draw will work with most pen tablets. Now you'll notice that I left a big gap around the teeth here. I'll show you why shortly. And I'm just quickly going to go all the way down the bottom here. And when we finally do cut this out, you'll see that the image will be a little bit dirty around the edges and that again is because the background is very similar in colour but we will clean this up. I'm not real happy with that tooth there so I can simply come over and select the eraser pen and I can rub out anything I'm not happy with like that there. Select the pen again and I just want to go around the tooth because I'm going to show you another way of doing this. Now we select the fill tool and a fill colour and we must make sure that we can fill inside of our mask. If it won't fill, then we don't have a complete mask. Click Preview and there we have our image. Now as you can see, it's fairly dirty. We need a fair bit of clean up, but it's very easy to do. So we'll click OK and there's our hippo's head. Now we simply want to move this over here finger on the control key and we'll flip that over the other way. And I'll just pop that down there. See the bottom edge doesn't matter so much because it's going off screen. And then we're going to resize up because I want that real sense of we're standing very close to this hippo and that lake is in the background and that's sort of what makes it look extremely interesting. A little bit bigger. Place that right there. Now whenever you resize you always have to right click and choose apply. Now what we want to do is really clean this up. Let me show you how we'll do that. We're going to come up to Object and Clip Mask and create from the Object Transparency a Clip Mask. You'll notice that this is our object and this black mask alongside has been added. So there's the object plus the mask. Let me show you how this works. If I turn off the background now, 
I can turn it back on easily, but I'm turning it off, all I can see is my hippo. So we'll just quickly zoom in. And effectively, what is black is obviously transparent. We can't see it all around the outside of the hippo. What is white is solid and we can see it. So all we have to do is select a paint tool, come up and select the color black, make that a little smaller, and as I begin to paint on the color back, black, it's almost like you're using an eraser tool. But what I'm really doing is I'm just making those parts of the image transparent. And this is fantastic. Now say I mess up and I don't like what I did. All I have to do is come over and select the color white. And look at that, I can paint it back on again. You see, this is non-destructive editing. I keep my original and all I'm doing is making uh, transparent the areas that I don't want to see. So back to my black color. And that's all we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead now and clean this image up, and I'll be back in just a moment. So that's my hippo all cleaned up, and it does look quite good. Now, I want to enlarge him a little, because I want that sense of, you know, we're right where he is. There's a real sense of perspective of we're right next to the hippo, and of course the lake is in the background. Right-click and apply any time you make a change. Now what I want to do, we'll pop that over there a little, is that I want to now bring in this other image from Corel Draw. So back to Corel Draw, select and copy to the clipboard, back to Photo Paint, and we'll just simply paste it from the clipboard this time. Click OK. And same as before, we've now got another object and I want to mask that object. So rectangular mask tool, click and drag. I want to just cut away that curve. You can see the wine pouring into the glass to around about there up to object and crop to mask. Now what I want to do is paint away this glass. So I'll zoom in here and I'm going to select my paintbrush tool but I want to sample the black first because it's unlikely this black is the same as that black. So I'll just click in here then I'll select my paint tool, finger on the shift key, click and drag to enlarge and I'm just going to start painting away the glass and I'll get as close to that wine as I can up there, so I'll just spend a little bit of time doing that now and I'll be back. Well I've painted away all the glass but you can still see that bit of rim right there so we'll just zoom in there and we'll select the clone tool I'll just right click on the outside with a bit of black and paint that away. Now I just need to obviously get rid of the look of that rim up there on the black area right click there Okay, so we've got rid of the look of that rim, so we'll zoom back out now, and that's our wine bottle. So now what we want to do is mask the bottle. So I'll grab my magic wand tool, make sure... Now, we've already got a mask around our entire object, so the whole object is masked. So if we go into subtractive mode, click on the black, we'll subtract the black from the existing mask. And we need to do some cleanup, so I'll just quickly zoom in here and we need to select the brush mask tool now sometimes it gets a little confusing which so just simply click and drag is it doing what you want well, in my case no it's not so I need to be in additive mode what I want to do is add to this mask and I'm just assuming I can see the extra parts of the bottle and its rim there okay and I'm just going to zoom back out a little just going to add what I believe is where the bottle would be and we're also going to use the clip mask option on this, so if we need to touch it up, we can. All right, now I can paint out that. Control Z, undo that, go into subtractive mode, and I can paint that off. Not that it would really matter anyway. What we're going to do is go up to object and crop to mask, and there's our wine bottle. Let's remove the mask now, and we'll pop the wine bottle right on the edge, shrink down to a size that's more realistic for the size of the hippo's head. Pull that down to about there, like that. That looks pretty good already. Now right click and apply, straight up to object, clip mask and create from object transparency. Make sure it's selected and we're going to do a really cool thing. In the same way that we edited our hippo, I'm going to select my paint tool select the color black, shrink this down a little, I'm just going to paint away the wine 
where the tooth is. And that's going to give the illusion of the wine pouring between the hippo's teeth, as you can see. Now if I want to touch that up, I can get white and just paint that a little bit there. There we go. And of course, the more time you spend with it, the better you'll get. Zoom right in for the best results. Okay, that'll do. F4, zoom back out. So now the wine looks like it's pouring between the hippo's teeth. I'll just paint out just that little bit of wine at the bottom there, just because that's where it would be pouring into his mouth. And what do you think of that? I think that's a great looking effect. Finally, if I pop that out of the way, I right click, combine all objects with the background, and I'm going to add two effects. Up to effect, blur, and zoom. Now when you bring up the zoom effect, select your plus and put it right in the middle of your subject. And of course you can zoom, create this incredible zoom effect. But I want just a little, trying to give the illusion of I picked up the camera and quickly turned my head to take a photograph. And the other effect is if we come down to camera and we come down to lens flare and I'm just going to select the plus, put it right on the edge of the bottle like that. We'll turn the brightness down a fair bit and the fall off down a little bit. A little bit more. Oh, too much, sorry. We want to increase the fall off as more what we really want to do. Click OK. And it kind of looks like we shot through, we took a photograph, the sun was in the background, and that's a real illusion. Now, if you don't like that particular effect, we can remove that one. But I think that looks absolutely fantastic out of two simple photographs.